Democrats need to be mature and they need to be honest and they need to say, yes, there is there's misogyny. But it's not just misogyny from white men. Mm -hmm. It's misogyny from Hispanic men. Right. It's misogyny from black men. Things we've all been talking about who do not want a woman leading them might be race issues with Hispanics. They don't want a black woman as president of the United States. You know, the, 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 the Democratic Party, I've always found when you're sitting around talking, they love to just sort of balkanize everybody into these separate groups and say, oh, white people don't like women and uh, black people. No, this is, this is, it is time for the Democrats to say, OK, and you and I have talked about this before. A lot of Hispanic voters have problems with black candidates. Right. A, a lot and of, with other Hispanics. And, You've got some and, exactly. that don't like each other. And, right. and some of the most misogynist things I've heard going on in this Get Out the Vote tour came from black men. I mean, misogynist things. So you're yeah. absolutely right. It's not simplistic. And we've right. got to have real honest conversations about it. Real so, honest conversations. Would be so proud and admiring of Kamala Harris. He did not just fight for the right to vote for black men when only white men could vote. He also fought for the right to vote for all women. When he was editor of the newspaper, The North Star, Frederick Douglass wrote, we hold woman to be justly entitled to all we claim for man. That was a very unpopular opinion among white men in this country at that time. And it remains an unpopular opinion among some white men in this country to this day. It may be that not enough people in this country yet believe in the full equality of women to elect a woman president of the United States. Gen X voted to turn America into an autocracy and to condemn our kids and grandkids to a far right Supreme Court probably for the rest of their lives. And it was not just Gen X, because while 91% of black women voted for Kamala Harris, 53% of white women overall voted for Trump, despite the open disrespect and demonization hurled by J.D. Vance and the Supreme Court stripping women's bodily autonomy, courtesy of Donald Trump, who closed his repulsive campaign by dropping the B word on Nancy Pelosi. The breakdown by education was stark. Harris won 57% of white women with college degrees and lost 63% of white women without them. It was also men. Trump won every age group of men, including 60% of Gen X men and six in 10 white men. Also Latino men who, despite the utter disrespect shown by Trump and his promise to deport some of your mixed class, mixed status families, most of them voted in a 55% majority to make the deportations happen. Y'all voted with Stephen Miller and David Duke and against your own sisters and chose Kamala, who chose Kamala Harris with 60% of their votes. So you own everything that happens to your mixed status families and to your wives, sisters, and abuelas from here on in. will be the 47th president of the United States. We're not going to do an autopsy of the candidates or the campaigns. What we are going to do tonight is take a step back and look at who we are as a country and what we actually want. This is not about Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. This is about a huge portion of our population who rejected the current system. And what we have to solve for is why. We are the most powerful and prosperous nation in the world. This country is winning. So I want to know why so many people in this country are feeling like we're losing, whether it is the economy, immigration, or for lack of a better term, wokeism. We have now let misinformation become the accepted information. It has washed over us. Elon Musk, he buys Twitter, and then he uses it almost exclusively to be a propaganda machine, and we've accepted it. We've accepted a narrative that despite an actually great economic recovery, the vibes don't feel good. So we wanna reject it and get something else. And the person we are now betting on to change all of it is Donald Trump, a man who did two almost impossible things. He won the American presidency twice, and he drove a casino into the ground. 
What will the future hold now that America has just decided that we're going to F around and find out?